Hey friends! Thanks so much for joining me for another Bible time. Last week we talked about the Great Commission, how Jesus gave his friends a job to do, to go out and teach people about Jesus and baptize them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. But what exactly were they supposed to teach? Luke chapter 24 gives us what I think is the clearest understanding of what Jesus was instructing his friends to teach. In verses 36 through 49, Jesus appears to his disciples again after that encounter on the road to Emmaus. He eats with them and he shows them that he's not a ghost and he's not a zombie. He was dead and he beat death and came back to life. Then Jesus says, see everything the prophets said was true. And once again, he explains all of scripture to his disciples so that their minds are opened and they understand how all of scripture points to Jesus. Finally, in verse 46, and forward, Jesus says, this is what is written. The Christ, the Messiah, the Savior, the Rescuer will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day. And repentance and forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations beginning at Jerusalem. Jesus laid it out. To believe and follow Jesus means to believe that Jesus is the one who came to rescue us. We repent, we turn away from our sins and trust that we are forgiven through the death and resurrection of Jesus. He died and came back to life so that we might be made right with God and then go out and tell others the good news. But there's a word that we can get kind of flustered by sin. What is sin? If you've spent any time in church, you can probably list examples of sin. Murder, lying about a friend or neighbor, adultery, stealing. But sin isn't just a list of don'ts. Jesus shows us that sin is something bigger. It is a bentness in our nature that separates us from God. God is holy and perfect, and God made us in God's image. But that image got bent when we tried to do things our own way. And so as a result, things are broken, and we think and do things that hurt ourselves, each other, and the world around us. Scripture teaches us that human beings were not intended to die, but to live forever with God. But sin, this bend in us and our actions, messes that up, and so the result is death. God doesn't want this for us, or for the world God created. So Jesus came that sin and death might not have the final word. Jesus revealed the fullness of the law and the fullness of our sin, that we might turn away from it and live the life that Jesus modeled for us. But knowing that the bentness goes too deep, Jesus knew that we wouldn't be able to do it on our own. And so Jesus died. He sacrificed himself and gave himself over to death, and then he came back to life. He beat death so that we might have hope and assurance that sin and death do not have the final word. We can look to Jesus and trust in what he said and did. 
We can live lives that confront the bad things inside of us. We can seek to right wrongs and bring justice and wholeness to the world. Even though this is amazing news, even this is not the end of the story or the end of the good news. But for the next part, you'll have to tune in next week. I love you so much, friends. I pray that this week our Savior, our Rescuer, Jesus, will call you to deeper reflection and deeper faith. Until next time.